everybody. Welcome to Working Horses with Jim. I'm Brenda, Jim's wife, and I am here to show you what's going on a little bit today. Jim is going to try to get the corn planted today. So he's headed off with the three horses, Lady, Ken, and Buck, and they're gonna do some harrowing. I hope to show you some things that are going on in our garden and all the things that happen uh, usually in the spring when we're getting ready to plant. So we're headed to the cornfield this morning and Jim has decided that he is going to run over the whole planting area one more time with the spring tooth harrow because it has been two days since he was last out here. He was letting it dry a couple more days as you can if you watched earlier you could see how wet it was and um, he wanted to just see if he could kill a few weeds before he planted later on today. Look at the gorgeous crop of um, clover and timothy that's coming up this year. This is last year's new seeding and it is doing fantastic. I expect it to bloom soon and we will probably put that into wrapped round bales. Here is the new seeding that he did earlier this spring and the oats and everything are coming up really great. That's looking good. The rain is doing some good. We've been kind of trying not to complain because it's so hard to get the crops in, but it's really making nice crops come up. Here's the corn ground, and you can see by the darkness that there is a wet spot here. It's nice to see that even though it's uh, real dark here, like it's still wet, the horses really didn't sink in at all like they were doing previously. So here we are in the cornfield. Jim is planting corn. He said it's been working very well. The wind is bad today, so I'm just going to do the talking and filming. and show you what's going on. There's the corn hoppers that hold the corn and they drop through and get covered up and pressed down with the wheels. And this over here, this halter thing, makes the next row marker, I guess you could say. Jim has Buck and Ken today. You can see where he's already planted the lines. These guys look like they're slow and steady. Slow and steady guys. Ken's really cracking me up with his coloring because he's Still losing a little bit of his winter hair and it's like um, bleached. So he's two different colors, two tone right now, but they're really sleeking up. Before Jim came out and planted, um, he was trying to get it so that it dropped a few more kernels per square foot, or per foot, I guess you could say. But by taking some, adjusting the links, but he decided to leave it the way it was. We stood up and came on out. It appears to be threatening rain a little bit, so this is a good time to get it in before it gets all wet again, too. And hopefully the corn will germinate soon.
so here's the line marker. And Buck says I'll walk right on that line. Good job, Buck. So if you observe very closely, you can see something is wrong with my corn planter. big tub right here is the fertilizer hopper and on the other side the fertilizer hopper is missing but uh, I do not use fertilizer on my ground anymore um, I am just relying on the manure and the green manure to grow my crops now we're trying to be organic although we're not certified but uh, because of that we don't want to use commercial fertilizer I have talked some about how I survive in the horse farming world and how we can be profitable even in the horse farming world. Um, the one way that I do do it is I keep my equipment costs quite low and as you can see this is quite an old junk corn planter that still continues to work and it would be so nice to have a really nice corn planter but I will pull this out of the shed and use this for anywhere from one hour to three hours a day, three hours a year. And so I just don't have a lot of use for it. So to buy an expensive corn planter for those few hours every year just does not seem very practical. So because of that, we have to kind of live with this old junk equipment and uh, keep patching it up and, and it costs me very little to plant my corn. Of course, if I was to run across another secondhand corn planter for a very cheap price, I most definitely would probably buy it, especially if I could find one just like this, so I could have spare parts. You can definitely see the corn on one side, but the other side there's a little bit of uh, um, dirt build up right there. Oh. This side right here. Yeah, that's. I figured you probably, it's still probably coming, I just couldn't. He said that's because the roller's broken and it's not rolling. Or the disc. I didn't think the other side rolled either, but it covers it up, right? Yeah, I need a new planner. Uh, yep. Well, do you, do you see what was wrong with my planner? My left hand side of the planet there is a coulter there that turns and covers dirt over the corn 
and that has seized right up and it's not turning at all, it's just sliding. On the right hand side it's working but still not very good. And I noticed last year, I remember now, last year that it was causing me trouble, it was just seizing up sometimes, it was working some, and I forgot to get it fixed. But now I've either got to get a different planter or get that culture fixed, and more than likely I'll get it fixed and I'll be planting this stupid old planter for many years to come. I was actually trying to find a kernel of corn. I thought maybe they would just be right there because they're bright pink, but I couldn't find any. Jim said that they're hard to find after they're planted. Well, that this job will soon be done and that the spring planting will be complete for this year and we can head on to other things. Jim's been working on getting some firewood out and he is also doing a little bit of sawing. And before you know it, it's going to be time to hay. So come along to the garden and I'll show you what's, what I'm doing there. So it's an awful windy day for filming. We get so much wind here where we live. I guess we're, we're in the St. Lawrence Seaway Valley and um, I don't know if it's, if it's wind from that, but we're known for the wind we have around here. Anyways, it's hard on the plants. I planted these peppers yesterday and they're used to being outside, but they're having a hard time just being out here in the open in the wind. So I have these um, outside, well they used to be um, soda bottles, and I just cut them apart and I'm just putting them around the plants almost like a little shield. Even if the plants are sticking out of the top, it helps so that they get protected just a little bit. I don't even have enough for everything, but but I'll do what I can here. And they really do good if you if I um, get some dirt around them. They don't blow away. I've used them before, and I don't know. They just help just a little bit. Here comes Jim. He's back from planting the corn and he's putting the planter away. We'll have to push that back into the shed. That was a job this morning, getting that out. Uh, it goes behind the sleigh, but anyways, we will be putting that away. The horses are doing a good job of backing up. Yesterday, I planted some tomatoes. Some of my tomatoes that I started from seed are not very big. I bought a few plants.
So I'm planting potatoes again this year. I'm planting more potatoes this year than I did last year. We've started to eat more potatoes again and we ran out last year and I sorely missed them. So we have some very exciting news. Very exciting. Lady is going out to the pasture. She is going to meet Duke and Earl. We're not sure how this is gonna go, but Jim has decided to give her a break and put her out with Duke and Earl. Maybe she'll get bread, we don't know. She has her front shoes on, not her hind shoes because she is a kicker. And this is going to be super duper interesting. We do not know how everything's going to go here. I'm closing the gate. I saw the colts earlier, but don't know where they are now. Alter's hanging like that. Come on, take it off. Yeah. Me too. Yikes, 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 yikes. <laughs> them. <laughs> they right they knew right away she was a girl, didn't they? <laughs> of course they know her anyways. Hey lady. She'll jump that fence. <laughs> She's cornered. We will keep you updated on what happened out in the pasture. So I wanted to show you a couple of the things that I have instituted this year in the garden that might be a little different than last year. Um, this year, instead of using the row maker that Jim made for me last year, I have been just using 
some copper pipe and string to make the rows. Um, I got that from one of our old neighbors and I just pound it in with hammer and then I can put in my row marker and I find that I can make a nice straight row with my hoe. Now when Jim does it, he does a really good job of just walking backwards and being able to keep a straight row. But for me, this way might not be quite as fast, but it makes a nicer row. My dad always did it this way. Um, different strokes for different folks, you know? And then another thing that I've been doing this year, which it's kind of silly to show you, but it works for me. I always like to write what's in each row because I forget before things come up and then I lose a paper or it's so hard to write on a little piece of paper when your hands are all dirty and and everything so this year I just took a big old piece of um, cardboard and a marker and I just started writing as I made my garden I know a lot of people plan way ahead and And um, that's great. Um, once again, my dad, who, who was a master gardener, used to, in the middle of the winter, he'd get out a piece of graph paper and plan out how he was gonna um, rotate his crops and all that. And um, that's super great. I just don't seem to be able to do it that way. So I've been, I wrote it down in big, in a big way and then I think I'll try to transfer it to a smaller paper and keep track of it that way. Maybe just hang it up in the garage so I can see better um, what's going on. But how do you guys do it? By the way, I wanted to say thank you to all of you who shared how you, um, what you're doing for gardening this year. It was very interesting to me and um, I appreciate all the different ways that people are gardening and growing things. I just also wanted to show you my ever-bearing strawberries over here and my raspberries that are in boxes. Excuse the uh, laundry on the line, but the ever-bearing strawberries are looking fa fabulous. They're gonna, they're blooming and I know lots of places people already got strawberries, but these are looking really good and They've done well for me here. Um, I have a little herb garden over here and um, I've got some thyme and a hot pepper and some sage and parsley and rosemary and oregano and basil. And then I've got a rock garden over there with some spring flowers and I haven't gotten to um, mulching this yet this year, but. It, it just kind of does its own thing, and I really think that's sometimes the best. And over here, I have my raspberry bed, and it's got tons of blossoms. I'm so excited. I hope they all come to fruition, and yes, I should have trimmed it, and I hope it's going to be okay till next year. I did trim them down in the spring, I mean in the fall. But um, we shall see, because they're really full in here. And then I have over here some strawberries in a little, I, have, I love junk containers, as you can see. And I have, these are all containers that have been found on the farm somewhere. And um, an old milk bucket, and this is an old planter. Thing. I put some strawberries in and there's an old milk can and some pots that I found here on the farm. So this is my new little corner and uh, I've been catching some rainwater here and I know this is not a good way to do things in a way but I love it to have water from the roof so I can just scoop it up and use it on the garden. Um, I know I say it's not good because I know it can attract mosquitoes but I usually use it up pretty quick so it doesn't get too full anyways I just wanted to share a little bit of my gardening that's going on here and I'm sorry if I went on and on about it and there's my perennial bed and I'll try to keep you updated with what's going on in the garden this year I've gotten about 
oh I don't know half of it planted and not much is coming up yet because I just planted it yesterday so thank you so much for coming along with us today I hope you enjoyed the visit and please come again and if you have not subscribed to our newsletter it is absolutely free and we just share little tidbits of what's going on here on the farm um, little pictures and whatever quotes and and we answer a question a week so if you haven't signed up for that feel free to it's in the um, description below you can click on that and it'll take you there to how to sign up you just click on the link uh, like this video if you liked it and if you haven't subscribed please consider doing so we appreciate your support we really do have a good day